from the station that made country music famous, 650 AM WSM. This is a Coffee Country and Cody podcast. Hi, it's Charlie Matos, and in this episode, we sit down with Rhonda Vincent and Jeannie Seeley. It was the morning of March the 2nd, 2020, when they would join us in studio, and we would take a look back just a few days to the stage of the Grand Ole Opry, when Jeannie Seeley would invite Rhonda Vincent to become the newest member of the Opry. We'll share that moment and share some great stories and memories. Enjoy our Coffee, Country, and Cody podcast with Rhonda Vincent and Jeannie Seeley. Just forget the love we knew Like I could Thank you so very much. Rhonda Vincent, everybody, and the Rage. Woo, she amazing. Hey, yeah, great. Oh, and there's one more thing. How would you like to be the next member of the Grand Ole Opry? <laughs> Wait a minute. Did you say yes? Absolutely, 100%. Oh, my gosh. I grew up listening to the Grand Ole Opry. Rhonda Benson, everybody, the newest member of the Grand Ole Opry. Uh, thank you, dear God. Thank you. And... <laughs> I think there was a headbutt in there, kind of like a couple of guys coming out of the tunnel uh, as a part of that. For those of you watching on Circle Television, but as you listen around the world, wherever you are, Rhonda Vincent, as of Friday night, the invitation of a fine girl singer named Jeannie Seeley. Got me crying again this morning. Yeah, you were watching yourself back. And you couldn't, you said you weren't sure what words came out of her mouth at first, right? She, the way she was saying it's like, and then I'm thinking, did I hear her right? Was it? Really? Are you serious? Because that's what I was like. I, I wasn't sure. Because you don't want to say yes if that's not what you asked. I know. It's like, I'm not sure I heard it correct. Yes, exactly. And I had to what? finally ask her, did you say yes? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a proposal. So how did the whole surprise go down, Jeannie? Because you're great at surprises. Um well, first of all, I was so thrilled when they told me I got to do this and because uh, I've wanted her there for so very long. But what I thought, uh, since she had done like I could, and I knew she was working on an album, so I went to her before the show and I said, just so it doesn't get you off guard, I'm going to come out and stop you so we can plug your album. She said, oh, yes. great, you know. Mm-hmm. So that mm-hmm. way she wouldn't tip her off at all if she saw me walking out there so it right. was totally a surprise but I was so emotional and I kept rehearsing it at home say it real quick oh there's one more thing would you like to how would you like to be the well every time I'd get to Grand Ole Opry I, I cried up. at home oh, yeah. trying to rehearse this line but did on stage too I'm so thrilled I wonder how many times have you had the opportunity to do that to invite only someone once to be- before and that was uh, for Brad Paisley oh. they had Oh, my goodness. Uh, I didn't know yeah. that. Jimmy Dickens dress up as Santa Claus and oh me as gosh. Miss Claus. And we <laughs> ask him at Christmas time perfect. if he would that like awesome. Santa to make him a member of the Grand Ole Opry or something like that. It's been a long time ago. And so. now Rhonda Vincent. Yes. On Friday night oh. with March 24th, your induction. March night. 24th, the Tuesday, yes. Do you have any input into that? Who plays that night you or what? what goes on? I have no idea. I just pretty much haven't slept. I've just been thinking about it ever since. So, yeah, Jean <laughs> Jean said to you, Gene Watson, you called Gene. So. Oh, yes. I, I called Gene and, and was talking to him. I said, okay, what do I need to know? He goes, well, the first thing, you're not going to sleep. He said, it's going to take four days for you. I to really get some rest it'll take four days so oh, wow. and we leave that's why i was hoping and i'm so glad to be here because we're headed to california tonight oh, okay and so we won't be back in town almost until the induction ceremony and so I, i'm so glad to be here and so my 
night of sleep should be tonight. So what family <laughs> members were in attendance on Friday night? Did, was everybody there? Did they? My did, band? You know, no, your family. No. Uh, none of my family were, were there. <laughs> and the greatest thing of all, now they called my husband, as when I came off the stage, Dan said, we, we called your husband while you were on stage and let him know. Uh, they were calling my mother. And mom's probably listening, so thank you, mom. Um, <laughs> they were calling her. She was on stage in X Line, Iowa, and th- and she had her phone, and, and this and, and the Opry calls her, and but she doesn't know it's the Opry, and she just turned it off. It's like I'm playing, she's playing, and then my daughter <laughs> then it called her. It's like. Nana, you've and it's like she just turned her off too. She didn't call, answer any calls because I'm in the middle of a show here. That's right. That's it. <laughs> what about my feelings, huh? And, uh, what about my show? She she had no and Tinsel's even texting her, but see, she completely disregarded any of that. Uh, they got done with the the jam, and finally she got her phone as she was walking out, and she's like. Nobody's here to tell. Oh, you know. <laughs> it's like, yes, Tinsel yeah. said, we were trying to reach you. So That's... my mother and my mother can't be there then. She's, you know where she is? She's going to be out with my brother on the Daily and Vincent cruise. Oh, Can wow. you believe this? Oh, I'll he gets favored there. nation Gee, status. Are you going to be there for me? Because nobody's going to be there. <laughs> and you, you, know. you can see where she gets her work at. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, seriously. And I don't know anyone who works harder than this lady. But you grew up <laughs> yeah. in it. You never knew anything up. else, yeah, did you? I, right. That's that's all we know. My mother, uh, well, my grandmother, my mom's mom, she was the um, the head of the garden club, Um she would fix a meal and then put pie pans on the table. She was your original Meals on Wheels. And so she would, we would go over for dinner and she would, she would take mashed potatoes, went in all the plates, put tinfoil over them, and she would take off. I don't know that we ever sat down and had a meal with my grandmother because she was delivering them around town uh, in Worthington, Missouri, which is population is 35. And all of the shut ins she would take meals to. So is- constantly doing things. When do you first remember at what age? playing uh, starting to play an instrument and performing uh my first memory was we had a, a tv show on uh, on uh, out of Atumwa, iowa ktvo and i was five years old i was, it was 1967 um and we did the Jerry Lewis telethon. Yeah, sure. And so we went, I think we probably left at two in the morning to drive. It was an hour away, the studio was. And we drove up there, and I decided I wasn't going to sing. And my dad took me in another room, and he convinced me, uh. if you know what I mean, <laughs> that I was going to. So my, one of my first memories is I was singing the bicycle song and tears were stringing down my face. And I remember looking over and I saw myself in the monitor and all these tears, <laughs> but I was singing. I was yeah. singing. So that, that's one of my first memories. I guess it's not exactly a happy memory. Well, you fast forward to Friday night and the tears are running I down know. your face again, right? All I do is cry on stage anymore. <laughs> I, I, that just hit me when she said her first appearance was at five in 1967, which is the year I joined the Grand Ole Opry. Wow. No. No, it is not. Uh-huh. September of 67. Oh, it was Don't God. Touch Me 66. That was, uh-huh. Grammy in 66. Came to the it Opry in 67. The telethon was in September too, wasn't it? I don't know. I, I don't think remember. it was September. It was It was always over Labor Day. I couldn't wow. do the telethon. I was joining the Opry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. She was the first to ever wear a miniskirt. There's something no. different Ooh. you can do for your uh, your induction and, uh, on Thursday, May 24th. Well, she no? wore one. No. She wore one Friday night. <laughs> I guess I yeah, sort of did. We're going to come back with Rhonda Vincent and Jeannie Seeley, Jeannie Seeley in studio. And don't forget the Opry, the premiere episode, reruns following us this morning in 36 minutes. Official gave her the invite this past Friday night. And I was just looking back on your Facebook page at I, moments backstage that you have captured much like you did you were talking about the video and the filming of what we just heard take us back to that night at the ryman auditorium on a bluegrass it was uh it was july 14th of 2016 and it was with bluegrass legends it was so extra special it's with bobby and sunny osborne now we had bobby booked jesse mcreynolds and mac wiseman and then i thought you know what let's just see if we can get sunny to come in and be on the show too and he said "Eh." he said i haven't been on stage in 10 years and so, but it's time. I kept, and he said, well, you know what? If Bobby would do it, I would do it. And I called Bobby and says, well, Sonny probably won't do it. But if he would, I would do it. So once I got that, I knew we could get this together. Sonny had not been on stage. He shows up with the shoes that he walked off stage 10 years before. And his shoes crumbled. 
They literally <laughs> crumbled into pieces. His wife had to run just before the show and get him some shoes to wear, and he threw those in the trash at the Ryman, and he's probably listening this morning. Sonny, your shoes, when I got ready to leave, I was the last person to walk out of the dressing room, and I looked, and I was like... Those are Sonny Osborne shoes in that trash can, and guess what? So I pulled those shoes out, put them in my car. They rode in my car, and then all of a sudden, these pieces of stuff were all over. It's like, what is this? It's like, it's Sonny's shoes. <laughs> so I got one of those. You don't. It's hard to find a two-gallon Ziploc bag. You know what? You don't see those every day. But those shoes are there, and I still have them. <laughs> but you have chronicled visits backstage with everybody. There's Billy Dean and Thompson Square, and then there's Gene Shepard and and Jeannie Pruitt, whom I think you said oh. was the catalyst behind you filming and capturing she that particular. She is the one night. that said you have to film this, and it's like I had seven projects started. I mean, I was doing. Um, all, all of these other, the one we won the Grammy, all the rage. And then Daryl Singletary and I started a project. Another one that, I mean, I'm telling you, God had to, had to guide that because all of a sudden Daryl calls me and he said, Hey, when are we going to, we'd been trying to talk about it for years. And he said, Hey, let's do that duet project. And I'm like, Oh my goodness. Uh, I already have all these pro- started. That one went to the top of the list. And I, I think because God knew yeah. he, he, prompted that and my husband's going don't start another project and then the rhyme and and Jeannie said you you have to do this I said I've got all these projects started I can't afford to do that because that was this is the most expensive and most extensive project I had ever put together Mm -hmm. on blu-ray on dvd and so much to it and she said I don't care what you have to do but borrow the money but do this project and so yeah. thank you Jeannie Pruitt for for yeah. prompting me to to film this well and there you are with Jimmy C. Newman and Jim Ed and Kitty Wells and Loretta and so many Mac Wiseman so many of those folks who were very much alive when you came to the Opry Jeannie Seeley oh, yes. are, are gone now on a part of Opry history but live in our hearts certainly I know but you know we're missing so many of those but that's why it's such a thrill for me to welcome somebody like Rhonda in because the Opry has got to continue and to bring people in who get it mm-hmm. you know and are going to be there and support it And, I mean, it's wonderful to have brand new faces, and we need them too. But we need all of it to keep this wonderful institution going. And she's going to be... She's going to be the glue that ties these oh. generations together. What were the circumstances the night you were invited? Because it's a much different, it's an event now, both the invite as well as induction night. It wasn't quite that way back no, in 1967, huh, um, was, was it? No, huh, um, there was no invite on stage or anything. I was on the road with Porter and Don't Touch Me was climbing the charts and they would call me every week and say, well, your record moved up to number such and such. And I'd say, did anybody call Mr. Divine? <laughs> I wanted the opera. So for those of you who don't know, Ott Divine was the general manager of the right. Grand Ole Opry oh, in those days. Okay. And an announcer. Incredible voice. Yes. Big, big voice. And a wonderful man. But, uh, yeah, finally. Because I, I just I wanted a hit record, but I wanted the Opry so bad. I mean, yeah. it was just my dream, too, you know, so. What do you first remember the Opry, Rhonda, as a we, kid in Missouri? Well, we came, my, you know, my father had a car wreck when I was two and broke his neck from, was paralyzed from the neck down and gained his mobility by using a cane. Soon after that, it had to be maybe a, a year or two. I might have been six, five or six. We came to the Ryman, stood in the very long line all the way down the street. And a man, yeah. because my, my dad couldn't lift me or anything, and there's I don't know who this man is, and I would love to find him if he's still yeah. around. He put me up on his shoulders because it was, I just remember it being so hot and just so <laughs> long. You know, you're a little girl, and it's like, I just want to I just want to get in and sit down. And, mm-hmm. and the, my memory is sitting there. And watching, seeing String Bean, I'm sure because of the his outfit. So oh, yeah. That's, yeah. The, that's yeah. the memory yeah, that's in yeah. my mind of seeing that. You oh, know, I have a, right. so how do we find out? Um, somebody said I was the 213th member. That's what that wiki, whatever um, Wikipedia, Wikipedia says. Uh-huh. Gene Watson says he's 221. So I would be 222. How ah. do we, how do we clarify that? I just realized that that's. We don't. I don't, I don't know. know. I would hey, call Aubrey Dad Rogers, the general we're gonna, manager we're of the Grand Ole Opry. All right. Oh, all right, you will love so this. We'll... Speaking of checking things on the computer, one of the new acts was at the Opry, and they were talking about it being their 
50th appearance or something and they turned to me and said how many appearances have you made and I said I have no idea so Amy Graham gets on there and it's so many thousand times I've been on and she said but wait you were a member of the Opry for 20 years before we had computers (laughs) (laughs) well they asked they asked little Jimmy one time I asked him about you know what his memory is and he said I don't remember I just know I came with the furniture oh yeah (laughs) Um, so quickly, uh, two things. How many performances have you given it? That was Opry? my Friday night was my 215th performance on the Opry. Right. And your first performance? Recall that night. For well, us. got 30 we, seconds before. Oh, the break. boy, I don't know if I could tell this story really quick. But anyway, Silver Dollar City, rainy day, my family, the Sally Mountain Show performing. Nobody's there. We're like, Dad, let's just wait till the rain stops. He said, No, we're going to play. They're paying us. Anyway. Nobody's watching. A w- of the next week, we get a call from Hal Durham and to my dad, and he said, uh, I'm Hal Durham. I'm, I'm a, a, the manager of the Opry, and we'd like to invite your family to come play. My dad said, we just met Charlie Leuven. My dad said, well, thank Charlie for in, uh, recommending us. He said, Charlie had nothing to do with this. He said, last week, while your family was playing in the rain, my family was sitting around uh, behind there listening. Oh, so life he was lesson, in the audience. Life lesson. You never know who's listening. Do your best. Bring your A game, right, Bring Jeannie? A game. Yeah. <laughs> and she will Tuesday night, March 24th, when she becomes the newest member of the Grand Ole Opry family. Yay. Rhonda Vincent, our congratulations. Thank you so very you. much. I am, I'm so honored, so humbled, and I, I appreciate it so much. I love you guys. And Jeannie Seeley, for your part in it, for yeah. pulling it off like you <laughs> always do. Yeah. I'm so thrilled. Yeah, they're, uh, they, you know, the man for all seasons, this is the woman for all seasons right here. <laughs> Whatever you need. all the girls back to celebrate this sisterhood, too, called Connie and the White Sisters back. Wonderful. Thanks for listening to our Coffee Country and Cody podcast. Our program director at WSM Radio is J. Patrick Tittle. Our digital producer is Haley Hall. Marketing and promotions director is Amanda Cannon. And I'm Charlie Mattos. If you like what you've heard, make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. And leave us a review on iTunes. It really does help new people find the show.